Hello everybody, thank you for joining me today. I'm so excited to present to you a new product. Um, we've been selling it for a little while, but I'm going to get down to the nitty gritty and show you all the uses of this wonderful new product and it's our Quilt Perfect Ruler Foot Set. Um, I, it's got some unique features and it really does help you enhance, enhance your ruler quilting. So let's jump in and let me just show you what you'll need to do to get it set up and on your um, machine. So with everything that you need comes inside the little kit. You get this nice um, 3 by 8 ruler. It's not any longer than that because it tends to get in the way. Really important, I did a lot of research and you don't want a ruler that's too long and gets caught on the poles and everything and you want it to be easily, easy, easy to adjust, okay? Um, then it comes with four, well, four different feet because you get a regular foot here. But it comes with, the first one I'm going to be showing is your, um, your precision foot. This is a really good foot, has the little prongs poking out to help you um, measure as you're quilting. And so with the ruler, it's just going to give you that nice precision lines as you are quilting so you can mark from one point to the other and get those nice crisp lines. Um, another thing that's nice about this is that it pivots and turns because it's on a bearing. Um, this is a patented piece that we've come up with because you remember our Wonderfoot 360, what an awesome foot that is. Well, we've continued that on with this foot as well. So it gives you that nice turning and it's easily uh, goes again your ruler as you're quilting. So that's the first foot I'm going to show you. Then the next foot I'm going to show you is um, the rolling foot. Okay, this is also on a bearing and you can see how easily it rolls and it's made to roll against your circle templates and any other template that you have and without all that friction on it and it just Actually, if you've got a lot of problems with your hands, it's just going to make it that much easier for you to glide around each of those templates. So love this foot as well. So that's the next foot I'm going to show you. Then the last foot I'm going to show you is our true track foot. This is a really cool new foot. And what it does it is it's, it's like our tracking guide on our cutters, but it's on the foot. So. It's just going to clamp on there and give you those nice, straight, straight, even lines all the way across so you can measure going down. And boy, it'll make all the difference in the world if you just like quilting straight lines. So I'll show you each of these and let's jump in and let's show you how to assemble it um, to your machine. So when in the kit, you're going to, if you have a 21 or a 19, um, and you have the old style feet, you're going to get what they call a collar piece. And we have to replace this collar so that we can attach this new style foot to it. Notice that this foot here has the long shaft. Well, once I change this collar piece, I can use our existing feet that are like this. They're a little shorter, just easier to use. So I'm going to take that off and make those adjustments. Now, I'm also going to need in my kit, my foot height gauge, so each of our kits come with that now. Uh, really important, this is such a great little tool to use. And you'll need your Allen wrench. Um, I think it's your three millimeter Allen wrench as well. So I've got the three millimeter Allen wrench right here. It's the little turquoise one, or the green one. And I'm going to take my needle out first, okay? because I don't want it in getting in the way. Just gonna put that off to the side right here. Make it so that you can easily get it when you're ready. And then I'm just gonna reach back behind here and take this foot off with my three millimeter Allen wrench, okay? So this is the first thing that I'm going to do is take this foot off here, okay? And this long foot will come out and I want to put my screw right here. Now, the kit also comes with extra little screws so that you have those if you drop one and you can't find it in your sewing room. Uh, we all know what sewing rooms could look like. It might be impossible. <laughs> 
So anyway, it comes with extras in case you lose it. Okay, so now I'm going to take this little collar piece off. This is this little piece right here that I have on my machine. So I'm going to take my three millimeter Allen wrench and loosen this screw towards the front, okay? And I'm just gonna loosen it. And then I'm gonna eventually just take it out. Cause I'm gonna need both of these screws for my foot and my collar. And this isn't hard to do, it, but it is necessary. And it's necessary to get it at the right height. And so I'm gonna show you how to easily do that. Okay, so now I've got both of those off. I'm gonna set them to where I'm gonna get them. And then I'm just going to take it off. I'm gonna use this just to pry it open just a little bit so I can take it off. So it's gonna come out. Okay. So this is the collar piece I'm now taking off, okay? Now I'm going to put this one on. And I wanna make sure that this little circle insert is towards the left side, all right? So as I put it up and on, and that's why you took the needle off. And we want this side, see how it doesn't have that end end in it? That goes on the left side. All right, so now I'm just going to quickly take my screw and it, so it screws on towards the left side and I'm just going to lightly, okay, thumb tighten it in. If you have it on this side, it's not going to work correctly. All right, so I wanna still be able to adjust it up and down when I set my foot height. So I just want to tighten it just a little bit so it's holding it in place. But I want to be able to, and it's a little too loose, so I'm just going to tighten it up. So it's not gonna, okay. So there I have it set in place, okay. Oh, I'm gonna loosen it up just a little bit. Okay, all right gonna stay in place right now okay so now I'm going to take my foot the foot that I'm going to use first and I am going to put it on right there and I want to make sure that I can see that my hole in the center is aligned straight with the hole and foot and now I want to put my needle back in okay so when you're putting your needle back in you really should use um, your uh, needle alignment tool and it's a little magnet that sits on the front right down here that helps you align your needle so that your eye is centered right in the center so i'm just going to put my needle back up in and do it without the needle alignment okay and i am going to eyeball it and i usually will put my finger behind here back against the hole so I can make sure that I'm getting it nice and straight, okay? And then I'm going to take my screw and I'm going to just finger tighten it in, okay? And I can make all my adjustments later. There we go. And you just want to thumb tighten it. You don't want to over tighten it. And yeah, over tightening can cause problems just as just as much as having it too loose. So there's just a happy medium, and that's why they call it finger tightening, because you're not gonna get it too tight or too loose. So just tighten it up till it's not gonna come out. Okay, now we wanna make sure that our needle is in the down position, all right? And we wanna make it nice and aligned, and we're going to just tap on our needle down. Come on, there we go. <laughs> needles in the down position okay now I can set my foot height and the height of my bar just just nice and even okay so I'm going to take my height foot gauge tool I'm going to put it right there and notice how it kind of pushed it up okay so now I can tighten everything up just the way it needs to be because everything's going to be nice and just right. 
Okay, there we go. I'm going to tighten this up so it's not going to go anywhere. And then I'm going to tighten. I'm going to take my other little screw that took off right there, and I am going to put it in place. Okay. All right. And then I just want to make sure that my foot's right there on it. Okay, there we go. All right, now I can take my foot height gauge off and I'm set to go. Now we're ready to quilt. Let's get some quilting done. All right, so I've got my feet out here and I'm just gonna use this kind of as my desk. I just wanna go over with you um, what I'm going to plan on doing today. So I'm going to just set this off to the side so it doesn't get in my way. I want to go through my checklist first on quilting. So always remember that you need to have your own checklist and what you're going to do. So I have threaded my machine and I'm going to re-thread it because um, I had to take my needle out. All right. So I'm just going to make sure that I have all my points in my threading correct. And you can do this in any order you want to do this. It's just important to always remember that for a better quilting experience, you need to have some sort of, it's like getting in the car, getting ready to drive. You, if somebody else has been in the car before you, you have to make some of those adjustments. You have to adjust the seat. You need to adjust um, your mirror so that you have a better driving experience or the radio to your best radio station. My gosh, that's really important. I want to make sure that I have my bobbin in because uh, I took it out for changing the foot. I'm just going to use these pre-wound bobbins and I'm using the smoky quartz for this quilt. So I put the smoky quartz on top. Now on the pre-wound bobbins, um, because they are filled so, and they're tightly wound, it's nice to take off just about a couple of winds on it. And you'll just, I don't know, leave that for the birds. Okay, they love thread. Okay, so anyway, I just take off a couple and make sure that you're cleaning out the lint behind your spring. <sighs> you know, take your lint brush, <sighs> clean it out, and then make sure, see, there's still some more lint right here. <sighs> there we go. Probably got it caught in my hair, but oh well. Anyway, and then we're just going to pull on it and test our tension. And it's pretty tight, and I didn't get it in correctly. Should be turning. See that? Tension not good. So I'm just going to take my little hopping foot height gauge. This little point right here on the gauge sits so nicely in the little screw that you need to adjust. Remember the rule, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So because it's tight, I want to loosen it, okay? I don't want to turn it towards the right. I want to turn it towards my left hand. So I'm just going to barely loosen it just a little bit, and then I'm going to check it again. Still tight. You're going to make another little adjustment. But see how nicely that fits in there? Gauss, the perfect tool for checking that. Notice I'm still, and now I'm getting a little better and I feel a little slight little tug. I maybe could loosen it just a little bit more, but I know as the bobbin starts to go around, it gets a little looser. So I want to start out with a little tighter. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And this is my little rat's nest to thread, okay? Um, Tell I can throw it out. Okay, so when I put the bobbin case in, this is really important. You don't want to pull on this lever here, okay? If you do, it's not going to set into the hook correctly. It's going to set outside of it and it's not going to lock, okay? So when I put it in, I always hold it between these two fingers, my thumb and this pointer finger, okay? <clears throat> Just think of the pointer sisters, okay? We're that old. Okay, so I'm going to set it in. If I have it between my hands like this, I don't even almost have to look and see what I'm doing. And lots of times I can't see, but 
you'll want to put it in the case and then you're just going to take your thumb once it's inside and you're going to push on it and hear it snap. Once you hear that snap, it's locked into place correctly. If you don't hear the snap, pull it out again and start all over. It's, it's hard to know sometimes and you don't want to chance it. So if you don't hear the snap because the TV's up too high or you know, whatever, the kids are screaming, you know, take it out and try it again until you do hear it. Okay, so now I'm just going to move over and I'm just going to move to my section. And you can see that I have a thick layer of batting on this quilt, which is what I love when I'm doing ruler work. I love for the, what I'm quilting to really stand out. And notice here on this piece of paper, I've just been experimenting with some new little designs that I've never done before. And I thought this was kind of fun. These are just little squares, and I just did these little oblong shapes. It kind of looks like a beehive um, on an angle. So it's kind of fun, and I'm going to fill it in with pebbles. I'm not going to use my ruler feet to fill in. I'm going to use another open toe foot so I can actually see and get in there. But that's what's so great about quilting is that you have all these different feet to do the style of quilting that you want. So you use the correct foot, and you'll just have a wonderful experience. And it's a lot of fun, too. All right, so let's jump over here, and I'm just going to show you. Um, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just move over here and I'm just going to do a three by three inch square in this area right here to fill in and I'm just going to start I'm going to do just start right here and I'm going to go all the way across making sure my ruler isn't shifting and I want to go all the way to a three and a quarter. All right so now Another thing is, is that I want my needle to be in the down position when I'm turning and adjusting. So if I do that, then I can turn it and leave it in place, okay? And now I can come back down and make sure that it's aligned, okay? So I'm just going to make sure my line is matching up. And I'm going to make sure I'm nice and straight. All right, and turn it off, put my needle in the down position, and now I'm going to come over here on this side, and then I'm just going to go back straight across, okay? So it just kind of helps you keep it nice and straight. You can do your measurements. And then I'm going to go up and around. But what's nice about this is that I could keep going and do fun, fun designs. But anyway, I'm going to just go up here. Remember the needle in the down position? It'll really make a difference. And you'll make nice squares. So another thing that you could do is pull on your thread, come in just a slight bit, and do a quarter of an inch offset using your foot. So you can start right here, and it's going to give you a quarter of an inch offset using your foot and your ruler as you're gliding along. So And I want to see where it meets up right there in the corner. Put my needle down. Now I'm going to turn it this way. Put it underneath it. And the reason it looks like it's popping up is because I have a thicker batting under it. So just know that. And then the foot really does help me when I get to that corner. I'm just going to stop it. Put it in the down position, and now I'm just going to glide along. It's going to give me that quarter of an inch offset all the way around, okay? Now, I could make a cool design. I could go back up, keep doing it on this side, and then come in from this side and do it. You, there's so many ways to quilt using this foot. It, only your imagination is going to stop you. So whatever you can think of, you can do. So let me jump in and show you some other neat ways to quilt, okay? Just know that this is a great foot for precision quilting. And it turns with you to adjust the ruler, um, to adjust with the ruler as you're moving. Just use the guide and use the precision that it's giving you, and you will have beautiful ruler work. Okay, so let's quickly change our foot to our rolling foot really quick. And I'm just going to move it over here. And I'm just going to quickly, I don't have to take my needle out this time, take this foot off. 
I can spend all day in the quilting room. Um, and by the end of the day, I'm really tired, but I am so happy and relaxed. I love quilting. So anyway, we're going to take this foot off and we're going to put our nifty little rolling foot on and we're going to use our height foot gauge, same thing. And we're going to put our needle in the down position. I'm just going to gently hold it in place. Make sure that it's aligned correctly. And I'm going to put my needle down. I don't, there we go. There we go. I'm going to put my, my screw on really quick. It doesn't take that long to change the feet, okay? I just want to make sure it's at the right height. And because I have a little bit thicker batting, you could maybe adjust it up just a little bit higher. Um, that's something that's totally up to you. You don't want to adjust it too high or you'll get skip stitches. Um, but that other foot, I probably should have adjusted it up just a tad higher. Um, and you can, okay? Okay, so here we go. This one, I'm just using the templates. All right, so on this one, I'm using two different styles of templates because I have really a rectangle here and I'm going to make these nice little designs um, going around it, these little scallops on the inside. And I'm going to use these circle um, templates. I'm going to use this little line right here for the smaller one, the smaller edge, and this one right here for the longer edge, okay? So let's just jump in and because I'm going across this way first, I'm going to align this little line right here on my seam, okay? And I'm going to pull up my bottom thread right here and do my needle up, needle down. But I'm just going to try to continue on quilting to show, just to show you what this is going to do, okay? And I want to center it so it's nice and centered and hopefully I've got it adjusted so it's a quarter of an inch off. All right, so I'm just going to turn it on. Okay, now I'm going to put my needle in down position. All right, so now I'm going to align it so it's centered and I'm just going to move from that point to the next point, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. So let's just turn it on. Okay, and we'll just move right up along it to the next one. And I'm going to hold this key on so I do the needle down. There, now I set my needle in the down position. You just have to hold it for three or four seconds and you're good to go. Let's see what a fun design that's making. And I'm just using the two different sizes because that's what it looked like I needed. So, okay, so now I've done the bottom and notice how easily that glided. I, I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. Okay, so now I'm just going to use this one. I'm just going to quickly show you what this one will look like. And I'm going to butt it up against it and I'm going to make sure that I'm putting this line right here on the seam. This gets to be a little awkward angle and this frame is up a little higher, but I'm going to do the best I can, okay? So just know <laughs> that Carla is, you know, not a contortionist, so I can't bend in a lot of different ways, but... Okay. And then I'm just gonna go back up here and do this one as well, okay? And I'll do that all the way across and then I'll come back. I just wanna make sure that I'm nice and even. Okay, there we go. And then I'll come back and do the smaller one. But I want to do it this direction so let's jump up and do it like that. Let's come down. And then I'll just go over and across, okay? Keep doing that. So I'll come back to this and get it finished. And one day I'll have this quilt completely finished. But I have one more foot I want to show you. This one is awesome. 
it hooks to the ruler and it tracks. So we're going to do some straight lines from here to here all the way across. So I'm going to roll my quilt just a little bit, okay? And I'm going to show you how this works. So now let me quickly change my foot and we're just going to come down here. And because I have the ruler base, I know I'm going to hit the front here. Um, so I'm just going to quickly roll my quilt. So I'm going to move all my items that I'm using up take my quilt clip off and do that first thing first. I want to roll it first because I don't want to forget to roll it. Okay. And I just want to roll it a little bit. You don't want to get anything caught up in there. <laughs> All right. That should give me at least a couple of rows that we can do. All right. Let me put my quilt clip back on. Really important to have that nice tension while you're quilting. I'm just going to back it up here. All right. Now I'm going to change my foot for the last time. And I'm just going to take this off. I don't want you to get bored, but I want you to, do, to try these new feet and enjoy all the features that they uh, have built in to make your quilting that much better. So I'm going to put my true track foot on. Now this is a foot that has a spring in it, so it's going to spring down. All right, I'm going to again put the needle in a down position. All right, now I want to put this underneath the foot because I, I want it to spring down just a little bit. There you go. All right, now I'll put my screw back on, screw it into place. Take my high foot gauge out, move everything out of my way so I'm not sewing on it. And I'm going to bring it up and under. And now I'm going to come to this area right here, okay? And usually as you are measuring, it works easier and better if you do it from bottom to top, okay? So I just want to come over here and you can see right there on the edge, I want to bring my threads up. And again, it looks like this is popping up. Don't worry about it, okay? Okay, because it's caught on my ruler. There we go. I want to bring it down here. This is the side that you're going to flip up to put underneath your ruler. All right, and now I'm going to use my ruler as my guide, just right along my seam, okay? I'm going to come right here to this end, and I'm going to move all the way to this end, and then stop, and then I'm going to move up in increments of whatever you want. You can even have them different increments. Um, you could do them exactly a quarter of an inch. But because I have this seam right here, I probably will measure this just to show you. So, anyway. Okay, so I'm going to leave it up. Now I can bring my foot up from the down position and I can move back and I can do, oh, say I want to go a quarter of an inch. Let's say I want to do a half an inch or even a full inch and then I just line it all the way across. But I don't want to do a full inch, so I'm going to do about a three quarters of an inch and then just show you going back. And I just want to make sure that that three quarters is all the way across as I'm moving back the other direction. Anyway, it makes it so much fun and it makes your lines nice and straight. See how nice that looks? And now you could do a design inside of it. You could do pebbling and you could just move all the way up uh, and create so many different ways to quilt. That's what we do here. 
we create tools so that you create the masterpiece. That was my mom saying from a long time ago and still true today. I really appreciate you joining me today. I just would love to see what you can do with all these fantastic tools that you have at your disposal. So send me pictures um, to Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A -A at graceframe.com. I want to see what you are working on and how you are quilting. Any ideas that you have for future your projects that we need to create we want to hear from you um, but thank you and I hope that you have a lot of fun using the ruler quilt perfect ruler kit and quilting so join me next time when I have lots more ways to quilt we'll see you bye bye hi everybody welcome thanks for joining me today <laughs> Hey, I just wanted to tell you the story about how come the True Cut rulers are now a part of the quilting um, feet accessory package, especially this one, and you'll see them further on down the road with some others. So um, I, had my, I had a 3 by 18 inch ruler, and I love our holes, and I love how they sit. They sit nice and flat, but they have that raised edge for the track. And so I had my husband cut down a three by 18 inch ruler and I loved it. And that is how it got into the packages because the holes make it easier for you to hold them and you can see the lines on them. And I swear, it's gonna catch on, you guys are gonna love it. And you don't want them too long. So if you've got some extra rulers that you wanna cut down, just make sure that you're not making the cutting them too long that they catch on the for the size frame that you have. So just work with, through that and you'll be good to go. So I'm gonna answer a few of the questions that came up. First of all, um, I used a double layer of batting. So I really like, like that for ruler work. It kind of leaves it kind of puppy, puffy and you can see the designs that much better. Um, um, okay. Does the feet work with a domestic machine? No, only our Cunic machines. Um, time to upgrade. You'll love them. So cool. So anyway, yes, they only work with our Cunic machines. Um, they are found on the website. Russ and I are going to show you where they're at on the website. They're an accessory. So if you go to the website, you can see them and look for Quilt Perfect. If you put that in the search, you'll be able to find them. So he's gonna pull that up here just really quick. You're in the website, and if you go over to shop, we're gonna come over to accessories. Find them, and they're right there. So look for Quilt Perfect, and there's all three feet. So you've got your true track foot, you have your, um, other, your other feet, and I can't even remember the names, but right now, um, and it'll just help you with your quilting. They're so much fun, and they're very engaging how they work, and you saw how easy it was to change from one foot to the other. I wanted you guys to all see that so that you would feel confident in your abilities to change the feet. You don't have to use the same foot. You don't have to use the same thread. You don't have to do the same design over and over again. Come on, let's explore and have fun. All right, and then uh, another question was, is, do I have a checklist? Yes, I have a checklist started, but I really want um, you to design the checklist for how you quilt. So I can get you started, and if you will email me, Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A, at graceframe.com, I'll be more than happy to send you the checklist that we have started. Um, just know it can be tweaked and you can do whatever you want to do that makes it easier for you to quilt. So there might be steps in there that you want to add that maybe you forget at times um, and there may be steps that you want to eliminate because you don't want to do those. So just make sure that you're uh, making the checklist your own and so you can quilt how you want to quilt. And that checklist is is getting started with your quilting. So it's just a checklist to say, have you threaded the needle? Have you changed your bobbin? Have you um, raised or lowered your take up pole? Have you done all these little steps that help you have a better quilting experience? So 
That's the checklist that I'm talking about. So yes, email me, Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A at graceframe.com. Then the other question was, should the take up rail be at the same height as the belly bar? No, okay? The belly bar needs to sit down just slightly lower so that it makes your fabric nice and even, straight across. So, I usually take my arm, okay, and butt my elbow up across and put my hand forward so that I can make sure that my fabric is laying nice and yellow. If my hand's not straight across like this, then I know that the belly bar is too low and that my machine's gonna catch up on it. So just take a look at yours and as you raise your take up bar, you are going to have to raise your belly bar because if you leave that at the same level, your fabric's gonna start separating. So um, just make sure that you raise them in those increments and you're good to go. Okay. Then let's go to the website and talk about signing up for Tuesday with Grace. If you have not registered, get your friends to register. We're giving away so many cool prizes. So make sure that yeah, everybody's joining me. And so let's go to the website and here's our little video on how to sign up. And you'll scroll down and you'll find Tuesdays with Grace. You'll click on the banner and you will register and then you'll fill out your information just real simple real easy and you'll put your name in your email address and then you can get signed up and you'll be registered for all of our fun exciting events that we're going to have now Another exciting event that we have coming up this Thursday is On the Road with Grace. So if you didn't see our fun Courtney and Janessa working on QuiltCon, um, we were at QuiltCon this week and had so much fun. I love QuiltCon. It's absolutely one of my favorite shows. Uh, make sure that you um, join us because Nathan is going to be at a show in Daytona and Mark is in a show in Hampton, Virginia. So. Um, join us um, this Thursday at 11 o'clock, and that is Mountain Time. So whatever time difference that you are, make sure that you sign up for that. And it's On the Road with Grace. We're going to show you the quilts so that you can be a part of our experience on the road. And it is a lot of fun. Um, and then next week, before I get to my little screens, next week we're doing the 19, the Cunique 19. Um, I'm showing how it works, all the functions on it, and then we're going to give away a 19. So please join us next week so we can get, uh, so that you can be in the mix for if you wanted to upgrade your machine and get a 19. So yeah, that next week's a great time to join us. Um, and then, oh God, so much to tell you about. Oh, I wanted, I met a couple of sweet ladies, well I met several sweet ladies and gentlemen um, at QuiltCon and two of them specifically heard about QuiltCon from um, Tuesdays with Grace and this is Joy and Mary and I just wanted to show you that they were so cute and so sweet and it was so fun to see them. They are from Arizona and they came to QuiltCon and it was just a lot of fun to have them there so a shout out to you Joy and Mary hi um, and then I had a sweet lady, um, Robin Anderson. She sent me some quilts that she had cut out with our True Cut. So these are her beautiful quilts. Um, she didn't send me a lot of information, but you know, here's a rail fence. Awesome. Nice job. And the quilting is absolutely beautiful. And then she's got this one. Now she did this one, I believe, with the circle cutter. It's so cool. So it's little cars in the circle. So she's just added so many. And look at how nice her piecing is. And I'm sure in part thanks to our true cut cutting system. So and then there was one more, her t-shirt quilt. Very fun. Thank you, Robin, for um, sending those in. So I love to see your quilts, and it's Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A, and I love to feature what you all are working on because it's not all about what I do. It's all about what you can do with the amazing products that we make. So today's giveaway. Russ, are you ready? <laughs> Today, partly inspired by Robin, um, I'm going to give away a circle cutter, 
and a set of the mini quilt clips, the inch and a half mini quilt clips. These are awesome. They can go around your thread and they can give you an extra clipping if you have to clip a, a little um, piece to test your machine with when you change your bobbin. These are awesome, so to take on and off. So I have two sets. And I just got the other winners, they're sitting out today a little slow because I was at QuiltCon. So, anyway, um, let's pick out a winner from the Facebook crowd. Oh, Robin, <laughs> he picked you. So you could pick something else out. You, since you have the circle cutter, I think, do you? Or if you don't, so you could pick um, something else out. I'll let you decide. You email me, Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A, and tell me what you think you'd like from the True Cut line um, that you're ready for. And then our other winner will be, oh, Barbara. Uh, you know what? I'm going to butcher your name, Barbara, and I'm sure you're going to say it beautifully, but the beaut. So please send, a, send me your information so I can get your product sent out to you. It's Carla with a K, K A R L A at graceframe.com. Um, and make sure that you join us in the future. Sign up. We're going to put all of our fun demonstration and classes online so that you can pick and choose. I hope you join me every week because I love seeing you and I love seeing what you do. So please make sure you email me with your questions. You guys make me a better quilter. Uh, answering your questions and helping you out with anything you need, it just really helps me help you. So I'll see you next week. So make sure you join us Thursday. Thursday at 11, and take care. Bye-bye.